hi everyone and welcome back again to my channel in today's tutorial we'll show the receiving side of the 433 megahertz transceiver project that we worked on last weekend now in on your screen right now on the lower right hand side corner you would see two breadboards one of them is the transmitter the one that has the resistor networks as it was from last week and we still have the Arduino Uno connected as it was last week. The power supply is coming through this USB connector. I'll we'll just connect it to the breadboard. And once we press the switch here, the LED we still left the LED in to show us that we're transmitting. And then on the receiving side, the LED is still there, um, but we remove the, um, the capacitor. So the you see it continuously blink, but that's not a, a problem now because we find a way to get a signal from the receiver to the Arduino without really uh, being if impacted by this con constantly blinking LED. All right, so when I press this button, you see um, the LED blinks more to indicate it's doing something. But what the thing I want to show you today is on the serial monitor right there and that's where we're going to focus today on the serial monitor we'll see that each time a button is pressed a text corresponding to that button is shown on the screen so we have this as button number one and that as button number five so as i press through you will see the serial monitor will tell you something about the button so let's do this one here so it tells you button one pressed you can see that clearly on the serial monitor button one pressed right so we were using the interrupt or pulse in of the Arduino for this so it measures the pulses and if it's within certain range it will tell you what button has been pressed button 2 pressed button 3 pressed now if we didn't hold it very well to measure the resistance it could give you some um, there could be some glitch there so this is an improvement area to to look at um, we didn't use the bounce here so it's it's just raw reading um, if you want to make this to be more precise you have to hold it a little bit longer to to finish the the pause in period uh, because when you press it and the pause is already on it waits for the pause to go down and then come back up oh, I'll show you that in the code come back up then to measure the, the pulse width and then the the pulse width will tell it what button has been pressed so i'll show you that in the code let's go to number four so button four pressed and then finally the last button button five pressed okay so again you get some glitches sometimes when you press it so quickly button five let's clear everything five Okay, I'm going to clear this again because I think I noticed something. When you press it just quickly and release it, it just measures the pulse, but it doesn't finish writing the, the instructions or the information before I remove my hand. Quickly, just tells me the pulse within that uh, quick period. So that's 5,000 microseconds, which is um, really 5 milliseconds. That's how long that was. That's how long that was. Quickly. But if I give it some time, then it reads complete and then measures the full pulse width and tells me what button I have pressed. Right. So let's go to the next button. I'm going to clear this. Yeah, that's how short that press was. But if I hold it, you know, so let me hold it long enough, then I get the full pulse width. And then full pulse width, full pulse width, and full pulse width. All right, so let's look at the code and see. We're going to start from the transmitter side first. The transmitter side didn't change much from last week. So we know how to read the resistance, and I can put this code in the, in the uh, instructions or in the descriptions. Um, but we know how to get the value of the resistance 
um, R1 and R2, we, we, we program R1 because we know that value from, from the start, and that's 2 kilo ohms. And then we tell it to calculate the other resistance, which is R2. So it calculates R2 by measuring all these values. And then we'll say, if the value is between this and this, again, it's a range, right? If this, if, if it's within this range, write 1,000 microseconds into this function here that we have here, signal generator. We, we generate a signal with that uh, time timeout period or, or that frequency. So at 1,000 microseconds, that is equivalent of one kilohertz. So we say, write that, you know, create a pulse, a square wave with that uh, frequency, one kilohertz. And then we we'll go ahead and do another one. Um, we'll say, in this case, if you measure this value, right, so write out the, write the, create a square wave, create a square wave with a frequency. So in this, in this case, we're doing um, 2000. So, which is about 500 hertz, I think, um, and so on and so forth. And then in this case, 300, which is about, I think, 3,000 uh, uh, microseconds, which is around 333.33333 uh, hertz, and so on and so forth. And then we do here, I think this should be around uh, 250, something like that. Um, so that should be around... Um, 4,000, yeah, 250 hertz, and then we'll do 500, which is 5,000, which should be around 200 hertz. So we create those the square wave with, with those uh, uh, pulse width, and then we'll write that to the transmitter. So we're saying print that or send that out to the function generator here, or signal generator. And the signal generator writes that. Um, so this to write on data out, it keeps it high for that period and low for that period. Actually, the frequency is half what I've just shown here. So when I said uh, 200 hertz, it should be around 100 hertz because it's it stays on for for uh, for the the length of time and then off for the same length of time. So the frequency is half what we've just calculated here. So we're going to have around um, 100 hertz here. For 250, you're going to have 125. For 333, you're going to have uh, around 160 something. And then for 1 kilohertz here, we're going to have around 500 hertz. So now let's go to the receiver. On the receiver side, we're using this code here. So, um, the pulse in function of the Arduino. So, first, because we're using pulse in, not pulse in long, but pulse in, we are disabling interrupts where we measure the pulse width. And we are telling it to stay on for around uh, 5 seconds or 500. Uh, 500 uh, there's 500 million, one, two, three, one, two, three. So five million microseconds, which is five seconds. So we're telling it stay on for five seconds. And if there's no, no signal, then you can do something else. We didn't write the else condition. We just said if pulse is received, do art. Otherwise, we don't do anything. So we can actually write a code here to tell us um, what should happen when there is no signal in but again we're saying if the pulse is greater than 1000 if it is greater than 1000 1, then pause duration in microseconds pulse in so we're going to print the pulse we're going to print the pulse and what is the pulse the pulse is these are in we're looking for when it is high uh, so when it is high if as long as it stays high uh, measure when it goes low stop the measurement and print out what the value is so that's what this is if i want to detect when it's going low i will write low here and so it will measure only when it goes low or when it's low going the low going edge of the square wave and then when it goes high again it will stop 
and give me the pulse width but in this tutorial we're just looking at the highs and since it's a square wave really there's no no difference the the high period will be equal to the equivalent to the low periods in the other channel we're going to give you uh maybe more more schematics or more joint or more in-depth uh information on how to measure this so we go here and say if the pulse is greater than 3000 and pulse is less than 4200 then it is the first button because we realize that in the measurement because of how fast or how slow you press it uh, whether it is already high whether the pulse is already high by the time you start measuring and then therefore it has to wait for it to go low and then start again uh, so it could be 300 it could be 4200 in that range um, so if it's within that range then it is still the button number one and then when it is more than 4200 but less than 5000 it is number two when it's more than 5500 but it's less than 6000 and but but in three and so on and so forth now how we figured this out was after we we, we beat the transmitter we just measured the, the pulse the raw pulse we measured it here and we printed it out when we printed it out we knew what the values were and then we took that values to determine the the code that we wrote here we will show that more in the other channel so that's how we were able to distinguish which button has been pressed so let's just do that again and i'm going to press the buttons one more time and let's just move this over and clear all right All right, button number one, priced, button number two, button number three, number four, and number five. Now, just because we wrote this code this way doesn't mean that's the only way you can use it, right? I told you last week I'm going to put LEDs and, you know, indicate which button has been pressed, but it doesn't really matter right now because you can see here clearly that you know the button that has been pressed. So instead of just printing uh, fifth button has been pressed, you can actually perform a function you can write a code here what you want it to do turn right turn left go up go down turn around jump up do whatever you can write here turn the light on turn the light off and you can write whatever code you want to do here so there's really no limit so there's no point limiting you to using leds you can do anything and everything right within this code all right thank you for sticking around to the end if you have not subscribed please do so right now and please don't forget to like and share this video until we come your again your way again with more content stay enthused